For the party my parents gave to celebrate my rabbinic ordination in 1991, I selected a quotation uh, on the cover of the invitation, uh, an, a quotation from Pirkei Avot, the sayings of our sages. Find yourself a rabbi and acquire a friend for yourself. At the time, I did not distinguish between my roles as rabbi and friend. Although I would soon be serving a congregation made up entirely of people I had never previously met, I imagined that I would make friends there the same way I had at camp in college and rabbinical school. That is, that members of the congregation would be my friends. At the, t meaning, the meaning of friend in Pirkei Avot is disputed. Most commentators understand it as merely an extension of rabbi. So the word friend is translated a friend to study with you, even though the phrase to study with you is not found in the Hebrew. One commentator, though, suggests that a friend is unlike a rabbi, and that Pirkei Avot is advising us to have both a rabbi and a friend, to meet different needs. A friend, writes Maimonides, is a confidant for their actions for all their affairs to be bettered, and they must make an effort to be lovingly attached to one another. I do cherish friendships in each of the congregations I have served. Still, the boundaries necessary to establish and nurture an appropriate relationship between rabbi and congregants prevent me from forming relate friendships with congregants in the same intimate ways that I relate to, let's say, my poker buddies, friends from camp in the 1980s. Conversely, though I have officiated many of those friends' life cycle ceremonies, particularly their weddings, I cannot really be their rabbi. Our personal relationship comes first. We all advise our friends from time to time, of course. Still, in my poker group, we are much more likely to turn to the veterinarian, the anesthesiologist, or the employment lawyer for professional advice than the group is to turn to me for rabbinic counsel. For me to provide that would require a level of authority inappropriate for a friend in discussing their inner lives. Moreover, even after more than 30 years in the congregational rabbinate, I have much to learn about how to comport myself as a rabbi. Lay leaders, particularly of Congregation B'nai Israel, have provided wise direction, and I trust them in large measure because I know that their advice comes from an eagerness for me to succeed and from loving support for me as the congregation's rabbi. Being close personal friends, though, would entangle the friendship with what is necessarily and appropriately a professional relationship, however friendly. As a young rabbi in formation, I treasured rabbinic mentors, especially three who could not have been more different from one another. From my childhood rabbi, I observed that the meticulously crafted sermon, excellent teaching, and pastoral presence complement one another. One can learn best from a rabbi who cares about you as a person. One can be comforted best by a rabbi who is drawn from the depths of our profession, of our tradition. In my Hillel rabbi at college, I saw something I could not replicate, but to which I could aspire. A quiet, humble presence in a rabbi who worked diligently, passionately, and successfully to build inclusive Jewish life in a diverse college community. The third, a rabbi for whom I interned, taught me that loving one's congregants is critical to being effective as their rabbi. And he instructed me, when trapped, be gracious. A lesson I know is right, but struggle to emulate. My rabbinic teachers continue to shape me as a rabbi, even decades later. More recently, I've learned the most from two different, but equally important groups. Close friends in the rabbinate, on the one hand, and younger rabbis, whom I've had the privilege to get to know, on the other. My close friends in the rabbinate fulfill the traditional understanding 
of find yourself a rabbi and acquire yourself a friend, for they are uniquely both. They include the Czech chief executive of a critical international Jewish organization, the senior rabbi of a large congregation, and a rabbi who works as a synagogue executive director. Admittedly, we do not get together to study Jewish texts. We learn from each other in our varied rabbinic experiences and personality types. With one, I marvel at strategic vision and its implementation. Another demonstrates discernment about picking battles, which is a challenge for me. A third has modeled productive and successful reinvention of oneself as a rabbi over the course of one's career. All three can and do tell me hard truths about myself, and I respond in kind. We're close enough that we can laugh about one another's foibles lovingly. That is also true of my rabbinical school classmates, a group that has only become closer and more highly valued over the decades since ordination. Tomorrow, I'm to head to San, San Diego for the annual convention of the Central Conference of American Rabbis, the CCAR. I say annual, but our 2020 and 2021 conventions were casualties of the pandemic. So I have not been at a large rabbinic gathering in three years. As I age, coming to know younger colleagues has been essential to my rabbinic growth. And I'll get to be with plenty of those this week. You've met some of these younger rabbis, particularly women who have visited us in person or via Zoom. This week, I hope to meet, some, with some, meet in person with some colleagues with whom I have developed meaningful relationships from a distance. For example, contributors to the Social Justice Torah Commentary and a younger rabbi to whom I was assigned as his official CCAR mentor, a relationship that has now outlasted the official mentorship by three years. I have learned so much from the rabbis all more recently ordained than me, with whom I was in a support group for solo rabbis during the pandemic. I hope that some will be in San Diego too. Newer colleagues come with fresh ideas and knowledge. I did emerge from rabbinical school, for example, knowing about gen I did not emerge from rabbinical school, for example, knowing about gender transition or diverse family structures certainly not as varied as those we are blessed to have in our congregation today. Many of you can share the blessings of gathering with professional colleagues and friends. For me, the need is particularly critical. The closest Reformed congregation served full-time by CCAR colleagues is two and a half hours drive away, and I have not been to Memphis during the pandemic. Several months ago, I said, I need nothing more than to get on an airplane to be with other rabbis. In the Talmud, Rabbi Hanina declares, I've learned much from my teachers, more from my colleagues, and most from my students. I learn a lot from the teens and adults I'm privileged to teach here at Congregation B'nai Israel. Still, the colleagues part is important. Pirkei Avot wisely suggests that we all need rabbis who are also our friends. That is, friends with whom we do not need to maintain the boundaries to, to, as uh, appropriate to rabbi and congregation. We look forward to I look forward to learning much from my colleagues in the coming week, and then to returning to my students with more to teach.